of Kath's family. I'm John Godowska's Catholic priest and I thank the family for inviting me to lead you as family and friends in this celebration and farewell for Kath. Of course we extend our love and sympathy to Kath's children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, to her siblings and together with all of the extended family. And in particular we think of Andrew and Rhonda Tanya, Alison and Katrina. 
And we also acknowledge that those who are unable to be here with us in Burnie, but who are watching this service li via live stream, thanks to Parkside Funerals. Can I ask that you make sure, please, out of respect for Kath and her family, that your phone has been switched to silent mode at least, or turned off? Thank you. One of the first things that we do in our Catholic tradition is we acknowledge the baptism of the person who has died. And we do that through a very simple prayer. It's in your order of service and I pray that prayer on your behalf. And then I will sprinkle Kath's coffin with holy water reminding us of the life that she received through her baptism and the life that we believe in faith she now shares. So firstly, I pray this prayer. My dear friends, through the waters of baptism, Kathleen died with Christ Jesus. May she now share with the Lord eternal life. So we have the family tribute and then a letter from Mum and Riley, if you could come forward, please. <coughs> Kathy was born on the 29th of December, 1941, in Queenstown, to Ken and Molly Palmer. She was the second of seven children, Betty, Kathy, Jim, Bob, John, Jeff and Lindy. In her early years, Kathy attended the convent school where she excelled at bookkeeping. At this point, Kathy wanted to become a nun. She had a shrine in her bedroom and often said that she wouldn't do anything wrong in case God would not be pleased with her. Kathy left school and worked at the office in Queenstown Hospital. Unlike the tradition of the time, Kathy didn't want to leave school, marry and have children. She packed her bags and headed for the big smoke, Hobart where she lived in the girls' friendly hostel and worked as a secretary for the Amalgamated Postal Workers' Union. While living in the hostel, she met her lifelong friend, Diana. They enjoyed watching a TV show called Wanted, Dead or Alive. One night, the TV station didn't air the show. Desperate for their Steve McQueen fix, they called the TV station and complained. One weekend, Diana took Kathy to her family home in Bothwell. When they arrived, Diana's brother Taz was showing off on a digger. Taz's dear skills must have impressed her because the next weekend she returned to the family home without Diana and it appears all thoughts of becoming a nun were gone. <laughs> Kathy soon became a regular part of the Chivers clan and loved them, own, like, loved them like her own family. There was never going to be anyone else for Kathy and there was never going to be anyone else for Taz. They married on the 31st of August 1964 and began a life in Queenstown. It was here that they welcomed their firstborn, Andrew. A short time later, they relocated to Bothwell and lived in a rectory. Kathy loved her time there and they soon welcomed their nextborn, Tanya. Within a few years, Taz suggested they move to Yola. Kathy often recounted her concern at, sorry, at the time they were moving to the middle of nowhere. However, Yola ended up being their family home for more than 50 years. The family expanded with two more children, Ali and Trin, later welcoming the addition of Rhonda when she married Andrew. Yola became the centre for family parties where all the men sat along the front fence, beer in hand, or when we all gathered and played cricket in the paddock. Family dinners were loud, filled with laughter, and often included inappropriate conversations. Kathy loved every minute of it. Lindy, being much younger, thought that Kathy felt she had more children because she was often with them. Holidays in Bothwell and Yola were great fun for Lindy. Kathy spent many years working for the Yola School, first as a teacher's aide and later as a one-on-one -on -one support worker. That position was her passion. She loved every minute of her time with her kids and would delight in telling us 
about their accomplishments and their antics. She often kept scrapbooks of the, of the things that some of the children had given her over the years. Throughout her time, Cathy rejoiced in the arrival of seven grandchildren and six grandchildren, including one on the way. They were the light of Nan's eyes. We thought this was possibly her most favourite role in her life and would often tell us that the rules don't apply at Nanny's house. When it came time to retire, Cathy and Pat, Cathy and Taz, so, purchased a shack at Arthur's Lake, T and K's retreat. They loved going to the shack where many more memories were made of fishing adventures and family fun. One of our favourite times was when family would arrive bringing morning tea. Everyone would stay seated at the table until lunch food was added, then afternoon tea and eventually tea food. With a huge heart and a wicked sense of humour, Cathy bonded easily with people. There are great memories of times with long-time friends, the Smarts, Gardeners, Billows, Mansfields and Haynes families. The Burrs were always a special part of the Chivers family, from cards nights full of banter and fun, fishing trips to the lake, to Bernadette and Cathy's adventures delivering spuds, there was always a laugh to be had. It's nice to think that they're all reunited now. Cathy has lifelong friends, pen pals that she wrote to for over 50 years. Her children's school friends came for a weekend and soon became adopted family. Anyone that came into Cathy's life generally stayed in it. She was Cathy, mum, nanny, auntie Cathy, Chizzy. She was a daughter, a wife, a sister, sister-in-law, a mother, a grandmother, great mother, an auntie and a friend to many. She will always be loved by her brothers, sisters, brothers-in-law, sisters-in-law, nieces, nephews, great nieces and great nephews. They will never forget her. As a mum, she taught us that it was okay to be mad, but couldn't stay mad. With three teenage girls in the house, you can imagine there was the occasional cross word. It would be nothing unusual to be in the middle of an argument and she would stop and say, oh, by the way, did you know so-and-so's having a baby? An argument was never really an argument. There was always a kiss and an I love you at the end of the day. Cathy's antics were legendary, many of which would be inappropriate to share today. She was growing poppies in the side garden, only because Taz couldn't grow veggies in there, and the local police visited and asked what she was doing with them. She replied, I'm going to get Taz to run through them naked. They told her that they were, they were restricted plants and that she would have to remove them. I can almost see her trying to crawl under the back door to get inside. Montana was staying for a weekend with her boyfriend and was sleeping in Kathy's room where there was a rather large picture of Jesus hanging above the bed. She told them not to do anything, Jesus would be watching. <laughs> Kathy and Lindy had many adventures over the years, leaving Yola at eight in the morning and being called by Tanya at four to see where they were. They were only in Oatlands. Trips to Rowville saw Jim and Gail watching Kathy's face when Jim told her to look behind them and there were four lanes of traffic coming up as we were stopped at the lights. Jeff also called her one day when she was in Hobart and told her that she had left, he had left two cray hanging in a bag on the back door at Yola. He waited a while and then called her back to let her know he hadn't. Lindy didn't know Kathy could swear until then. Up until she grew her wings, Kathy was smiling. She loved living at the Wynyard Care Centre, the people, the activities and the outings. We will be forever grateful to the staff and other residents for their compassion and kindness shown both to Mum and to her family. In closing, Andrew, Rhonda, Tanya, Ali, Trin and our families, thank you all for the joy and love you've all brought to Nan's life. She loved you all. I now have a personal letter from Nan that she wrote back on the 4th of August in 2016. If I'm still living at the house at East Jolo when I die, my children and partners can sort the house out. The middle room is for you, Dion. I love you all very much. Do not be sad. You have all made me very happy. I am very proud of you all. My grandchildren and great-grandchildren, I love you all very much. Thank you to my in-law children. Thank you for all you have done for me. I love you. Thank you to my friends, my relations and families for your love and support. Thank you, Lindy, for the times we shared together. To Diana, I'm so glad I met you and became part of the Chivers family, and I'm so grateful for the love and friendship you have given Tanya. I thank the Chivers family for all their love and support. To my other family, the Burrs, thank you for making me part of your lives. 
To my great love, Taz, I love you. Thank you for all you have given me. I have been so very lucky. Thank you, God, for giving me the wonderful life I've had. Kathy Chivers. Thank you very much, Riley. Well done. Thank you on behalf of the family. Well, we have some photos now. Elvis Presley's Amazing Grace and Ed Sheeran's Supermarket Flowers. Took the supermarket flowers from the windowsill Threw the day-old tea from the cup Packed up the photo album Matthew had made Memories of a life that's been loved Took the Garrett Wilson cars and stuffed animals Put the old ginger beer down the sink Dad always told me, don't you cry when you're down 
But mum, there's a tear every time that I blink Oh, I'm in pieces, it's tearing me up But I know a heart that's broke is a heart that's been loved So I'll sing hallelujah You are an angel in the shape of my mum When I fell down you'd be there holding me up Spread your wings as you go And when God takes you back He'll say hallelujah, you're home Fluffed the pillows, made the bed, stacked the chairs up Folded your nightgowns neatly in a case John said he'd drive then put his hand on my cheek And wiped a tear from the side of my face See the world as you did Cause I know A life with love is a life that's been lived So I'll sing hallelujah You are an angel in the shape of my mom When I fell down you'd be there holding me up Spread your wings as you go And when God takes you back You'll say hallelujah you're To see the person I have become Spread your wings and I know That when God took you back He said hallelujah, you're home Photos are wonderful, they take us back in time And um, they touch our lives Some really lovely selection there so thank you to the family for those sharing those with us. I'd just like to share this scripture reading. It's from John's Gospel. Jesus said, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God still and trust in me. And there are many rooms in my Father's house, for if there were not, I would have told you. I'm going to prepare a place for you, and after I've gone and prepared a place, I shall return to take you with me, so that where I am, you may be too. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas, one of his friends, said, Lord, we do not know where you are going, so how can we know the way? And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one can come to the Father except through me. I'd just like to offer some thoughts, if I may. The loss of the last remaining parent brings us a sense of being orphaned, abandoned and alone. And I think many of you have already had those experiences. And grief does very strange things to us as human beings. No one person ever grieves the same and we often go through a whole range of feelings and emotions as we come to terms with the loss and the death of someone we have known and loved. Our mothers have very often played a very significant role in our lives given they have nurtured us before our birth and often continue to nurture and care for us as their children even though we are adults. And as Christians or as people of faith we're not exempt from the human experience of the pain which comes to us through death, but we are invited, as best we can, to be a people of hope 
and individuals who focus on things which take us beyond this place. None of this takes away our grief, nor is it meant to. But I think for many people it gives a sense of direction and seems to steer us through the tough and the difficult moments of our lives. And I get this sense that Kath was a woman of deep faith, uncomplicated, inherited faith which sustained her throughout her life in the good and in the not so good times. When I came to Burnie some 10 or so years ago as the priest, Kath was often at our 10 a.m. Sunday Mass, expressing in a formal way her love of God and her Catholic faith. And as you know, as time moved on and she became more unwell, it was difficult for her to maintain this connection. But you could be sure her faith and her belief in God continued with her to the very end. That text from John's Gospel, he was one of the four writers of the Gospels in the New Testament, speaks about our troubled hearts, but also we hear of a gentle invitation from Jesus to not allow our hearts to be troubled as we ponder the mystery of God and give expression to our faith. And also the writer speaks about there being many rooms in the Father's house, reminding us of a God who is so often far more welcoming than institutional or organised religious communities or churches. In fact, it's Jesus who tells us there is a place for all of us in the presence of God. And something, I'm sure, gave comfort to Kath throughout her life. And towards the end of that text, we hear how one of the early disciples, Thomas, is uncertain as to how he should live his life, and he asks Jesus for the quest for an answer. Kath knew what was important in her life, her family, her children, her grandchildren, great-grandchildren, her siblings, and a relationship with God. For Kath, these connections became, using the words of Jesus, the way, the truth, and her life. We give thanks to God for Kath's life, for loving and for caring for those closest to her and beyond. And it is our faith that leads us to believe that Kath is now in the presence of God, together with Taz and with all those whom she has served so faithfully. And I'm sure that when Kath was called home to God, they would have met as friends, not strangers. Perhaps even hearing the words whispered to her, well done, good and faithful servant, enter now the life that I have prepared for you. Kath, Rest in peace. In your order of service, you'll notice there are what we call prayers of intercession. So there are a series of prayers, and the family have asked me to lead these on their behalf. And you'll notice after each prayer, there is the response, Lord, hear our prayer, and I invite you to pray that with the family. My dear friends, having listened to God's word and reflected on it, let us place our prayers before God today. For Kathleen, who through baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, that she may now be admitted to the company of the saints, Lord, hear us. That Kathleen's family find courage and peace at this time, Lord, hear us. That those who have gone before us mark with a sign of faith, that they will now live in the presence of God. Lord, hear us. For the medical and nursing staff who continue to care for our sick, for the frail and the dying, Lord, hear us. And for those places within our world where people are deprived of medical help and assistance, Lord, hear us. And for ourselves, that our belief in the risen Lord and the promises made to us through baptism will be fulfilled. Lord, hear us. God, our shelter and our strength, you listen in love to the cry of your people. Hear the prayers we offer for Kathleen and all who have loved her in this life. And we make these our prayers, those also in our hearts, through Christ our Lord. Amen.
I don't know whether the children actually said this to me, but they did say that Kathleen insisted that she had a Catholic funeral, otherwise they'd be in strife. So we continue the tradition, if you like, of the Catholic community, and we have what we call the Song of Farewell. It's in fact a prayer of farewell, and we always pray this. If you'd be so kind as to join in the response after each of these short petitions. Saints of God, come to Kathleen's aid, hasten to meet her, angels of the Lord. May Christ, who called you Kathleen, take you to himself, and may the angels lead you into the presence of Abraham and Sarah, prophets of old. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord, and let the perpetual light shine upon her. And I invite you to join in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. My dear friends, in peace, let us allow Kathleen to be taken to the place of cremation. So Kathleen, may the angels lead you to paradise. May the martyrs and saints come to welcome you and take you to the holy city, the new and eternal Jerusalem. The family would like to now place some flowers on her coffin so Simon will come forward and look after us for this. And we have Fly by Celine Dion as we do this.
the family would like to invite you to join them for refreshments immediately after um, they leave the chapel with um, Kath's coffin into the ante room. I invite you to please stand. Together again, my tears have stopped falling. The long, lonely nights are now at an end. The key to my heart you hold in your hand, and nothing else matters now. Cause we're together again Together again The grey skies are gone You're back in my arms Now where you belong The love that we knew is living again And nothing else matters now Cause we're together again Together again My tears have stopped falling The long, lonely nights Are now at an end The love that we knew is living again and nothing else matters now cause we're together again no nothing else matters now cause we're together again